This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, we have from Kebab. Comrade, I suggest you do a missile range video on the RVVL missile. You did the R-37, the Phoenix, the AIM-120CD, the R-27ER. I suggest you do the review on the KS-172 Nevada RVVL missile, which is available with the SU-35 mod. Okay, never even knew this missile existed, so let's go and have a look. The Novata KS-172 is a Russian air-to-air -air missile designed as an AWACS killer at ranges up to 400 kilometers, 250 miles, 210 nautical miles, which blasts anything we've looked at so far out of the water in terms of range. The missile has had various names during its history, including K100, I, sorry, I can't pronounce that, 172, or Project 172, AAML, RVVL, KS172, KS1, 172S1, R172. It sounds like something that's been cancelled many times and started up again. The airframe appears to have been derived from the, uh, from the book. How about that? Sam, but development stalled in the mid-90s for lack of funds, collapse of the Iron Curtain, blah, blah, blah. It appears to have restarted in 2004 after a deal with India, who wants to produce the missile in India for the SU-30 export fighters. It is the heaviest air-to-air -air missile ever produced. And that's saying something because those AIM-54s back in the 70s were massive. Mass, 0 0.75 tons. That's as much as a small car. Length, 6 metres, 20 feet. Warhead, HE frag, 50 kilo. Relatively... S no, no, it's quite a big warhead, actually. It's a big warhead. A solid propellant tandem rocket booster. Sounds like you've got two rocket engines in there. Operational range here. At least 200... Ah, here's interesting. At least 200 kilometres, possibly 300, 400 kilometres. Flight altitude, 90,000 feet or 100,000 feet. Maximum speed is 2,500 miles per hour, Mach 3.3. INS navigation mid-course and terminal, it's got its own radar. Well, that's it in real life, as far as we know from Wikipedia anyway. Here is our current league table. PL-15 Chinese at the very top, AIM-120D slightly behind. Remember, there's always a tiny bit of error here. It's impossible to get the absolute perfect because, you know, it takes a few milliseconds to pull the trigger. So plus or minus a couple of miles, I'd say. R37155, AIM 54 140, and we go down to the R27ER at 48 miles. More importantly, here are the limiting factors. Now, here's the problem with testing the RVVL. We'll go and do it for you, but we've basically hit the maximum parameters of DCS with these long range missiles. So the AIM 120D and the PL 15 could go further in DCS. They've got the kinematic ability, maybe even the R37, I'm not sure, but they are limited by at this point, radar lock. In DCS, you cannot get a radar lock more than 160 miles. It's not possible. Go out, try everything you want, try every plane you want. You won't get it more than 160 miles, or at least not more in a Flaming Cliffs 3 module, which is what all of these mods actually use. Now, bear in mind that DCS World was not designed to use these missiles. That there is the maximum that DCS World was designed to use. I don't think it was designed to use R-37, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's the AIM-54. These ones were then added on by modders, but the actual game hasn't caught up yet. So almost certainly we're going to max out 160 nautical miles. But let's go and try it anyway, because that's what you guys essentially pay us for. So in we go. So we are Fuel. in an SU-35 mod. It's going to be based on the uh, flanker that's in-game. Flaming Cliffs 3, obviously. We are flying at 62,500 feet, the highest we can fly, at 390 plus. That's Mach 2.3, or it will be by the time I've got to terminal velocity. So that's the fastest and highest my SU-35 can possibly go. We are against an unmanned, an unmanned A380 drone. It's the biggest cross section in DCS. It's the highest and fastest we can possibly get it. There is nothing more we can do to increase the chances of this missile hitting and locking from long range. Pause. Double check the throttle. Get the autopilot on. Get the radar on. For it. The blip is going to appear on the screen. We lock the blip with fire. Stop. Locked there. And it's almost certainly going to be 160 miles. It's just where the DCS radar in the aircraft, at least Flaming Cliffs 3, it's where they top out at the moment. <laughs> what a surprise, 160 miles, you see? So whatever happens here, we can't go above 160 miles. We've hit the limit of the game. I'll fire it anyway, just to make sure. Uh, uh, 
Let's at least see what the missile does out of interest. Now here's the thing, I thought that rear bit that was a, a separate booster section. Uh, zoom button's not working for some reason, but at the back there, apparently not. Speeds, it's not lofting, it's not lofting. It's going 3,200 knots, true speed. 60,000 feet. Now here's the interesting thing. Why is it not lofting? I don't know. 3,500 knots. I don't know what that is. Mach 8 or something? Mach 7, Mach 8? Coming up to 4,000 knots, still not lofting. Although there's no flame coming out, I can still hear a rocket engine going, so there is a rocket engine going. 4,200 knots. Can't see the hostile aircraft yet. 4,000. It topped out at just over 2,400 knots, but it hasn't lofted. Now, any serious missile that wants to go serious range will have to loft. That's just how missiles work. You need that super thin air up there, so it's very weird. And bear in mind, it did say that it can go up to 90,000 feet in Wikipedia, didn't it? I get the feeling this has just gone off course. I'm going to speed it up now, valued viewers. I don't think we're going to. No, there it is. Okay, we're going to get a hit. Watch this. I don't know if you can see that. There's a con. Plenty of kinematics. We've got 3,000 knots. It's flying at a funny negative angle of attack for some reason. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. What's happened there? Right. We've got a miss. Unless it's going to do a loop or something weird. It's run out of battery. We've seen this a million times, valid viewers. When it just dips like that, it had loaded kinematics. It had 3,000 knots. Okay, it can go the distance easy. It ran out of battery, which the real one almost certainly wouldn't. Let's try firing, in this case, not as far away. So it looks like the missile is just not modelled accurately. That's what I'd say. It looks like. Let's try 150 nautical, shall we? Okay, I'm just going to speed up this time. Oh, would you look at that? Did it again. Now well, that was unexpected. So we'll try 140 next. That's all the way 140. So we could actually stopwatch this and see what the battery length is, but that's the point. We might as well just get the range. Look at that again. Run out again. Right. 130. Should hit this time, I believe. There we go. It's modelled in DCS A, not to loft. B, the maximum we could do with our radar anyway is 160 nautical miles. And C, the battery just runs out at a certain time. Seconds. Oh, look at those wings go down on their own. That's so funny. Uh, so the maximum we can get is about 130 nautical miles with the RVVL. Is that realistic? I don't think so. But as ever, I'm not an expert. Let me know your thoughts. I hope that was useful. Otherwise, see you later.